So for those of you who are wondering what forensics and digital forensics is all about, and how you do an autopsy on a computer, or if you will be encountering any cadavers in your forensic examinations, let me give you a very basic idea of what you are getting into. The word forensics is derived from the Latin word forensis, originally meaning of or before the forum. This term comes from Roman times, when a person accused of a crime was formally charged by the presenting of a legal case before a group of people in a public forum. Arguments and evidence for and against the defendant would be presented to decide the outcome of the case. The side with the best presentation and delivery was usually the winner. Roman forensis involved into the legal court system used by much of Western civilization today. So what does the Roman legal system have to do with cadavers and medical examiners and televisions, the forensics files, and all that? Because the presentation of arguments and evidence in a court of law is extremely important to deciding the outcome of legal cases, the term forensics has come to mean the art and science of legal argument and presentation of evidence in a court of law. If you are making a presentation in a court case, you are doing some type of forensics. Forensic science is typically described as any type of scientific process, procedure, or method for identifying, collecting, analyzing, documenting items that are being presented as evidence in a court of law. Anything can be considered as evidence, such as clothing, handwriting, fingerprints, a dead body, and even the insects crawling on a dead body, are all subjectable to forensic examination. This also includes all digital information. Digital forensics uses processes derived from computer science, not medical science, so the only cadavers you will see in a digital forensics lab are dead computers and bricked hard drives. If you already work in the field of forensics, you know how involved you may become in the legal system. However, if you are just exploring the possibility of entering into digital forensics as a career path, you may be thinking to yourself, I just wanted to find hidden information in computer systems using a bunch of cool tools. Does forensics mean I'll be testifying in court too? The answer to that question is possibly, but not necessarily. You see, while forensics methods and procedures are necessary for collecting, analyzing, and presenting evidence in a court of law, not all items of evidence collected end up in a court. In fact, most don't. But this doesn't mean you don't need to apply the necessary due diligence and due care when performing a forensic examination. All procedures must be handled and documented as if they will make it to court, or at least to the deposition phase of the legal discovery process. If you do end up in court, you will not only testify on your deductions based on your factual findings, but also on the methods and procedures you use to arrive at your findings. Did you establish and maintain chain of custody for each item of evidence? Were the tools you used in your examination known and accepted by the digital forensics community? Did you follow methods and procedures recommended by reputable forensic organizations? These are all important points you should be able to prove. If you were an ordinary IT person, I wouldn't worry about being subpoenaed to appear in court to present your findings. Unless you are formally trained to perform forensic work and do so under strict procedures and conditions, the forensic investigations you perform may not have much value in a court of law. Because you are not formally trained, you therefore have a high probability of making errors in the collection, handling, analyzing, and documentation of digital evidence. An informally trained IT person's judgments may be acceptable to his or her employer, but likely not to a court of law, even if you have a college degree in computer science and a fistful of IT and forensic certifications. When dealing with a security situation that may have legal involvement, skip the IT guys and always call in the forensic professionals. Regardless if you are a forensics pro or just some IT dude named Ben, you will always follow the same procedures when conducting a forensic investigation. The six major stages of a forensics investigation are collecting, where you gather and document evidence, preserving, where the evidence is stabilized, duplicated, and preserved in a persistent state, confirming, is performing verification of the integrity of the preserved evidence, identifying, 
is discovering what the evidence is, analyzing is realizing facts about the evidence that is important to rendering a finding, and presenting is the documentation and reporting on the findings of your forensic investigation. This plural site court focuses mainly on the preserving, confirming, and identifying stages of the digital forensic investigation. Some of the preserving techniques I will demonstrate can also be used in the field as collection techniques when you can't bring evidence back to your forensics lab. Forensic analysis will also be explored, but we won't be reaching any factual conclusions based on real evidence. And as for forensic documentation, that would be a subject for an entire course of its own, so I won't even broach the subject in this course.